Okay, since uh, one of the ponds is out for, the, for one of the big paddocks on this field, uh, the cows were really spaced out today. They weren't all together. So I had to track down these five uh, and I got to try to get them back with the herd because I moved the other 19 to the new paddock and I want to move these five, make sure they're on the same paddock at the same time. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. Well, they want nothing to do with me or my truck or my distiller, so... I mean, there's enough grass on this paddock for five head, obviously, middle of the summer, so... I'll just have to try to get them another time. They're pretty content in the shade over there. You are not welcome here. Cows are happy and the grass is happy since it rained last night. Of course, the Kansas sky is happy. It's a beautiful place. Where are my lead cows coming over? This is the old paddock. And then here's the new paddock. You can see it looks a lot uh, more lush and green over in there. So we're gonna move into there. I'm gonna check this fence here. Plenty high. So it was one tall one. And this tiny one trying to sneak by, but I saw it. Then I get it. Okay, we're gonna unhook this baler, move a couple bales. Uh, today we're chopping some oats, which is the last of the uh, spring forages we're going to chop this year. We planted corn on the one side, uh, but our idea with this 25 acres is to grow these oats and hopefully collect a little rainfall sometime in the rest of June and uh, early July. And then drill uh, our, our uh, forage blend that we've run cows on and uh, we'll have the option of of haying that, but most likely um, we'll run like high risk cattle. We're just trying it. Hopefully, you know, we get some good rains to be able to put that there and uh, try it. Um, Cause it's, it's real close to the feedlot. We can watch them, we can uh, get them in. We didn't think it was gonna rain tonight at all. Um, kind of still have this chopping stuff out, getting some rumblings and the storm popped up right to the west of us. Literally, it's out of Syria right now. It's about five miles away. Wednesday, uh, June 14th, I think, or 15th, and um, we are chopping, we're chopping some oats here right by the farm. Um, we planted these oats, oats in uh, February or March, I can't remember. Just got our chopper going here, um, and just one truck, uh, since the, the trench silo is just right next to the field, and, and uh, this chopper can't go very fast, um, but it's pretty pretty decent oats uh, for how much rainfall we've we've had um, we're, we're pretty happy with with what we got here Another rain at my house last night, about an inch. 
So I am now up to five inches total in the last 10 days at my house by Lindsberg. And then out here at the main farm where everybody else lives or close to it, um, they're only at about an inch and a half, maybe an inch and three quarters total over those same 10 days. So still short on moisture out here. My house is finally, there's starting to be some puddles. There's starting to be some water in the ponds. So uh, after four inches, there was no sign of, of runoff. But after five inches, we're finally having a little bit of runoff to get, get some water in the ponds. But where we really need the runoff is out here, where our irrigation ponds are and um, where a lot of our row crops are. Uh, at my house, that's pretty much mostly wheat. And so um, that crop has kind of done its task. It doesn't need rain as much. But we do plan to double crop there, so that's good. But um, we need more rain out here. That's the, the bottom line of the story. And, and that's kind of a... I've been repeating that in the last three videos, but it's probably a little confusing when we keep getting rain at one farm and, and not at the other. We had some neighbors start wheat harvest yesterday, but then of course uh, got rained out. Um, and so wheat harvest is getting very close. We need to look over the combines um, but we wanted to get these oats chopped first, and then our uncle had some had some work he needed help with too. So um, we're busy today with all that stuff, but hopefully tomorrow we'll get the combines out and uh, be ready to go on wheat harvest by next week, uh, where it's it's supposed to get hot and dry again. So that's exciting, but um, still lots to do. All right, we're finishing up this field of oats. There's Kendall doing chores in the background over there. So this wasn't a huge field, uh, but it did give us some more feed, and we should make it to August with all this silage. Uh, and August is when we'll chop corn, and we have plenty of corn this year. Uh, some of the most corn we've had in a long time, so. Flushing out some wildlife on our last couple passes here. Well, McPherson's getting rain again. Not the farm. Eva and I are out here scouting the Milo stand after the nice rain to get it up. You can see it peeking through the uh, residue cover here. Uh, this is where we had cows a lot of the winter. Uh, the Milo is really small, so you can't. But it's poking through there. So here where there's less residue, you can see it coming through more consistently and faster, which is pretty normal. Next year, I kind of want to get uh, our row cleaners um, back on there to have the option to kind of clean the row a little better. Um, with Milo, I'm basically not concerned about un uneven emergence. Um, and I think that residue actually helps um, avoid crusting um, but with corn it is pretty important to get more even emergence and so especially when we have kind of uh, uh, r really variable conditions with residue I think it would be good to have that row cleaner option. The cattle manure doing its fungus thing getting that bio biology in the ground. You can see it must rain pretty hard it actually ran through here a little, which, but part of that is because this is where we fed with the feed truck. You get some compaction and you lose your residue and then it, it runs off more. I feel like this is Eva's happy place. So many smells. Should be all sorts of birds here in the fall. Checking the stand on some of the beans too. This field was corn last year. Grazed the corn stalks with cows. And drilled bean stands are always, uh, you know, they're not just perfect spacing like a 
planter when you look down, but you can see the green down the rows and this will still canopy a lot faster than 30 inch row. Or a 15 inch planter is probably the best way to do beans, but then you have to have a 15 inch planter. And this will canopy about the same time that 15 inch rows would, I would think. But there will be spots that there's a big gap and then spots where <laughs> there's a lot in the same circle. So this is what we're equipped for. And I like solid seeding it better than 30 inch rows. Our residual that residuals that we put on are we're mostly worrying about keeping the broad leaves at bay and mostly pigweed palmer amaranth so once we start seeing some palmer amaranth slip through that's when we want to spray our our post application we like to scout and you know spray for what we have there um, but usually it takes the full program the green machines are out Weed harvest is upon us. Apparently there's people cutting. We got green spots, because the no-till after beans is the later stuff. But, supposed to be 95 next week. Better have them ready. Well, it is weed harvest time. Nathan is uh, getting, working on the 9610 over here. Uh, Kendall's working on the 9770. I'm uh, hooking up the 7430 and grain cart because the 7 r is still on the planter. We're, we're not, not done planting until after double crop. So, got lots of action. We're might, maybe going to try later today. Uh, the neighbors are going, but we don't have any, we didn't plant any super early wheat, so we're not sure how, how ready ours will be. But when the neighbors are going, that means it's time to go. What the shop looks like from above the rafters. Getting this auger put back on. Why'd we take the auger off, Kendall? Because it's just a couple inches taller than Dad's shed. Yep. Same reason we folded these. This is the high point. So around. we took it off and then folded down the uh, bin extensions. So we've put those back on. All right, we've got the headers on. Uh, we've got the combines greased, got the air filters blown out, got uh, a couple six sickle sections replaced. Uh, I think we're about ready to go do a test cut. Got the, got them fueled up. Can you risk making a nicer wind drive? Okay, we are going. I'm in the green car. Just got the first dump unloaded. I mean, it's not not my. Day, but uh, the moisture on this field was lower than we thought it would be uh, we don't don't know if our moisture testers are perfectly accurate but it was saying 11 percent so we're going and uh, wheat harvest 2023 has begun I've got Nathan's dog with me we're, we're being friends huh Ziva we decided to uh, take the straw choppers off we we want to windrow about half our wheat this year, and so we we had to decide uh, which field we were going to start with based on whether or not we wanted to uh, take the straw choppers off. But we ended up deciding uh, was our seed wheat. This is our seed wheat, which we rarely cut our seed wheat first, but uh, we think it's one of the only fields we have that's ready because it doesn't have any green spots in it. Um, a lot of the fields with the with the lack of moisture. There were spots that either, you know, didn't come up uniformly or maybe it was a draw and had a little moisture to keep it green for longer. It's just, it's not consistent this year. There's, this was our, one of our only consistent fields. So even though it's our seed wheat, we decided to go ahead and cut it first.
our first spill. I put a little bit in this in this truck, and then I came back here to check to see if there's any leaks because we had bolt we just bolted it down. It was used for silage a couple days ago, and I found this thing was like an inch open, so I stopped it before the bleeding got worse. Well, got my combine tucked in for bed. Time to go tuck in my kids for bed. Probably not gonna be there for their bedtime a whole lot of times, but I'm gonna try to be there tonight. They're going to bed kind of late, but my wife and the older one were out doing something. All right, we are quitting for the night. Uh, we're gonna bend this wheat, so we filled up the grain cart and the truck, and uh, it's getting kind of damp. There's a chance of rain tonight. Uh, it's not a very good night to, to cut any later than it is. So since we're only, since we're only about a, quarter mile away from the farm here we're putting the combines in the shed uh, gonna get this grain cart tarped I didn't get off the road enough I guess <laughs> when you're driving a, a 35 foot draper head uh, pulling off the road isn't good enough you gotta pull way off the road so he can get by <laughs> Now, now I can go by. We can get a, get away with driving this 35 foot draper head down the road when, when it's out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, first night of wheat harvest, complete. Thanks for watching everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website, www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.